How's it going everyone? In today's video we are checking out the latest MacBook Air with that new M4. Now this one is the one I personally picked up which happens to be the base version with the new default 16 gig memory as well as 256 gigabyte of storage because we are using externals. But in this video I'm not going to go ahead and only talk about cool hardware. I'm going to be going over tips and tricks as well as the entire unboxing experience and what we should be expecting. And of course, timestamps to everything will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Now let's begin with the unboxing. It's no longer wrapped in plastic. It's now very similar to like current generation iPhones. And there are two size choices to choose from. There's the 13 inch and a 15 inch and the price range $999 for the small 13 inch and it's $100 more for the large 15 inch. And the color we have selected is the new sky blue color. And this thing is pretty thin and it's hard to tell on camera. It looks more silvery, but it's definitely like a nice tint of a light blue. But back in the packaging, we have, we have color match and braided MagSafe 3, as this is the charger right here, connects to USB-C. And behind here, we have the default 35 watt dual wall adapter. So we have two USB-C ports. Since we have the 15 inch, we are upgraded with the 35 dual USB-C port. But if we got the base 13 inch, we would have received a single USB-C power adapter, which happens to be rated for 30 watts. And there are additional upgrades because on the 13 inch, you can upgrade to this 35 watt dual USB-C port charger. And for the 15 inch, the one we have here, we could have easily upgraded it to the 70 watt USB-C power for a faster charging, which Apple advertised it to be able to charge up to 50% in just 30 minutes with that 70 watt power adapter upgrade. But regardless on which body color you select, the MagSafe will match the color of the body of your MacBook Air. Any beauty about these little latest generation Macs is you could decide on charging it via MagSafe or utilizing these two USB-C ports to charge it that way as well, as these are now Thunderbolt 4. And then on the opposite side, all we have here is a audio jack. And for the instructions, unfortunately we only have like the quick starter guides, nonsense paperwork, and that's it. And a massive thick piece of cardboard right here taking up space, so gone are days of free Apple stickers. And if we quickly get a scale out, zero it out. This weighs about one point five kilograms about 3.5 pounds so it's pretty heavy but not crazy heavy you know and then if you're a content creator i'll highly recommend picking up a usb-c hub something with additional usb-a ports usb-c as well as hdmi but most importantly an sd slot because unlike a macbook pro these airs do not have any sd cards for any additional storage to import your data and such but putting this down opening it up you kind of get a feel how the new blue color looks like. There's no speakers on the side, as the speaker are likely not only just tucked inside the unibody, but most likely placed right here on the vessel of the display. But the display is massive. And the trackpad is the same size as like a MacBook Pro. Now this here is indeed the new exclusive color, sky blue, but you can still pick up the silver color, starlight, as well as midnight. But if you would ask me, I'm personally happy that I went with this sky blue color. It's definitely something different if you've been looking for something unique. Now, while it's updating, let's talk about the internal hardware. So this is the first MacBook Air that's available in the market that's powerful enough to run up to three displays at once, including the main one on your Mac. So it could power 6K resolution monitors at 60 Hertz. And the specs on this latest M4 is also pretty impressive as well. This chipset boosts a 10 core CPU and up to 10 core GPU, delivering an enhanced performance for various of different tasks, such as photo editing and video editing. This should have no issues, especially with the default 16 gigabytes of unified RAM memory, which can be upgradable to a 24 gig or a 32 gigabyte if you need to. And then a new improvement for the MacBook Air is this webcam, as it now has a 12 megapixel camera which supports center stage during your call, so it does have center stage technology. But when it comes to battery, nothing has changed as the MacBook Air maintained its still impressive 18 hours of video streaming as well as 15 hours of wireless web use. And then the beauty about these latest generation MacBook Airs is that the price has been reduced to $999 starting 
where it's $100 less than the previous generation M3 models. You do get a lot of bang for your buck on these new ones. So if you're somebody who's looking for like multiple screens to be hooked up at once while having your main screen enabled and still running, this M4 is now finally able to do that. And that's new for any MacBook Air. All right, now that our MacBook is set up, since we did select the base 256 gig storage model, let's see exactly how much gigs were left once the machine is fully set up. And it looks like we have about 204 gigs out of the box once it's updated and all set up with your account. So you'll definitely be needing an external drive if you're planning on using this for content creating, which I plan on doing. And then when it comes to the overall keyboard and peripherals that we have here, of course, we have the latest generation trackpad, touch ID to not only lock our device, but also lock it once you register your fingerprints. But with this trackpad, we do have support for multi gestures. So if we open up a couple of different windows and we use like a four finger swipe up, it's gonna take us to our mission control. And the cool thing about this is if you hover over one of these windows and we tap spacebar, it will highlight the window to make it larger so you can visually see the window that you're trying to activate if it's something really small like this, this one right here, see? And then the next thing I like to personally do whenever I get a new Mac is customize my control bar. You see this top portion right here on your Mac, if we click over here next to the day, it will launch control center. And if you want some of these shortcuts to be on your taskbar, you could simply just click and drag it and drop it right there. It'll stay right there if you want to have quick access to stage manager. So basically anything here you can click and drag it and make into an actual dedicated spot for your task manager. My most favorite one is probably like the now plane, which by click and dragging right here, I'll always have the ability to quickly pause or play whatever media I was listening to. Now, since I will be using this MacBook Air as primarily to be hooked up with two additional monitors, it's good to know that by holding the option and brightness key at the same time, It'll quickly take you to your display settings and from here you can quickly adjust the brightness, the tone, as well as rotate the displays. If you have two other displays hooked up to your machine, you could click and drag it right here and rearrange it whenever you're doing things on the go. But if you're trying to present something and you like to also include audio, by holding option and a volume rocker, this will quickly take you to your sound settings to so go quickly change between different outputs from right here. And then, although the MacBook Air is advertised to be able to achieve anywhere from 18 to 15 hours of battery life under a single charge, in order to accomplish that, you need to go and adjust your battery settings. So by simply going into your battery tab and go into battery settings, this is where you can actually go in and actually enable low power mode to always be on or only when on battery. I personally like leaving it only when reserve on battery power because when it's because when it's attached to a power adapter, it's kind of defeat the purpose. So by enabling always on battery, that is likely to get you 18 hours or more battery life under a single charge. And sorry about those interruptions on those text messages. Uh, new device, haven't yet set up my focus mode, which is the next thing I recommend you to do. And then of course with these latest OS MacBooks, you can always just click on the time to manage all your notifications as well as widgets right here even turn off completely or mute for today. Now this new window over here was something that Apple recently added where you can now mirror your iPhone from your Mac. I highly recommend going in here and set it all up as this is something you have to do manually and it's not set up by default. But once you allow, you can hit get started and then just unlock your device. And now we can control our iPhone right here from our Mac. And then if you're a multitasker, I highly recommend enabling multi-corners. This is a feature that's also disabled by default and you'll be able to find it in your system settings. If you go in here in the max and go in system settings and just type in hot corners right here, you'll see under desktop and docs, select hot corner shortcut. And by going here, all four corners of your screen, you can select what you want to do. So if you want to lock your screen, when you go on the top left, it'll do that on the top, right? You can allow it to launch. You can allow it to start a screensaver and on bottom left, you could set notification center. And so by tapping done, if I want to lock my screen, I could just do this. It locks my screen immediately without me having to tap on the touch ID key. Or if I'm too lazy and from clicking notifications up here, I can always go down here and also pop it up. So it's fully customizable to your personal preference. And thanks to the M series chipsets from Apple, you can also go on the app store and download some of your favorite iPad games as they are compatible, including third-party apps, other third-party apps on the iPad, you can install on your MacBook Air as well. In addition to that, this webcam, as I said, so if we launch our FaceTime calling right here, it does say it supports center stage to hit continue. On the top right-hand corner, you'll have desktop view. So I need to do it this way to show you this little window is like your table outline where you want to line up. 
and then just tap share desktop view. And now we are sharing our desktop. So I can like feature products and talk about it and stuff when in a live group chat doing like a tutorial or something like that. But other than that, there you guys have it. Those are all the cool things that the latest generation MacBook Air can now do and is capable to deliver. I'll be sure to make a part two of this video. First things I recommend others to definitely change in terms of like new settings, as well as software recommendations to install to allow you to get the most value out of your new device. So be sure to subscribe as well as make sure to leave this video a like because I'm curious how many of you guys also picked up the MacBook Air or are planning on picking one up. And if you have any additional questions for that next video, feel free to comment down below and I'll be sure to answer it in the next follow-up video of the MacBook Air. Thank you so much for watching.